<laughs> All right. So I've been having some difficulty here with uh I want I wanted to go over some of the trickster rope changes, what I wanted to test out, what I thought was maybe worth checking out or making a build. Whatever I just wanted to share a few ideas. However, it seems the retraining system here just it's not retraining failed. It's being very hit and miss, so I can't actually retrain. I do have one loadout that actually is not used at all, so we're just going to use this as a example just to check out some of the different feats and the different uh, powers, setups, things like that. But uh, this video, I guess uh, we can thank Winky Dinks, <laughs> that name, uh, Winky Dinks, because he commented, how do you feel after the TR nerf? How I feel about it is a little bit mixed. I'm a little sad that the Trickster Rogue isn't going to be doing the same damage that it did before. There will be no more power stacking. Um, Shadow of Demise isn't going to be like overpowered. At the same time, I'm actually kind of excited to test out some new builds. See how some of the different Paragon paths work now. As opposed to, you know, they weren't exactly viable before. You had Executioner, and you if you wanted to be top DPS, you had to be Executioner. Now, I feel like there's maybe a little more balance between the different paths and the different options. So, that part about it, actually, I'm excited about, and I'm excited to start learning and exploring it. Um, a friend of mine... Uh, and I are going to test out some different Trickster Rogue builds and stuff in a video. Hopefully this week. I'm hoping this week. But, uh, yeah. So, anyways, we have our standard take toughness. Put a couple into additional action points for combat advantage damage. Critical chance, of course. Um, you deal 6% more damage after leaving stealth. That's going to be really important now. Especially because I have a feeling Saboteur is going to be quite strong. Um, we don't care about threats. Deflection chance doesn't matter. That doesn't matter. Counter powers do matter. Put one more in there. This increases that. But we're going to go with at wills and then two in there. So that's kind of the basic setup. That part about it isn't going to change. Stealth lasting longer, deflection chance, restoring stealth, less threat, and more stamina regenerating. Eh, it doesn't matter. It's fine. First and foremost, let's take a look at Saboteur. Shady Preparations hasn't changed. We're going to keep it. Flashing Blades, your at-will powers deal 5% more damage when your stealth meter isn't full. It's iffy, but I'm going to leave it out for now. Knife's Edge, activating a daily power reduces all your cooldowns by 15%. We're taking it. Exposed Weakness, while in stealth, you ignore an additional 25% of your target's armor. Only when you're in stealth, not good. Attacks from behind your target have 10% increased critical chance. Your Gloaming Cut now increases your stealth regeneration by an additional 10%. For sure, Flashing Blade sounds better. Gutter's Born Touch. Dealing damage from behind your target or dealing combat advantage dam damage grants you the Gutter Born effect for 6 seconds. Your armor penetration and damage are increased by 10%. This, I feel like, is going to be a must-have because it says when dealing damage from behind your target or dealing combat advantage damage, which, as we know, when you act add in Infiltrator's Action you actually always permanently have combat advantage. You should, anyways, at least towards endgame. You definitely will. That sounds like a permanent 10% damage increase. So I see no reason not to take it. Return to the shadows when behind your target, you deal 25% more damage with encounter powers, and they refill 25% of your stealth meter. Forget that. Uh, ambusher's Haste, you deal up to 25% more damage based on how full your stealth meter is. Shadowy Opportunity, when you leave stealth, you gain Shadowy Opportunity for 5 seconds. Shadowy Opportunity causes your attacks to deal an additional 50% of your weapon damage as piercing damage. 
Again, this sounds really interesting because you have it for five seconds and it causes your attacks to deal an additional 50% of your weapon damage is piercing damage. As a saboteur, you are entering and leaving stealth quite a bit. I don't know, and it's going to take some testing, but I don't know if this bonus actually stacks on itself. If it does, that would be quite nice, actually. So it's worth checking out. But I think it's definitely one you're going to want to have. One with the shadows. Already decide against that. This is where it gets tricky. Impossible to catch. Press the advantage. It's not that great anymore. At the same time, back alley tactics. Uh, it's one you want to have. It's hard to say. So Bloody Brawler. Gives more lifesteal or more deflection. Let's see. Survivor. Eh, that doesn't matter. Combat advantage damage by 10% for its duration. It, hmm. It's mixed feelings because I feel like you can't, you, you would miss more damage by ignoring back alley tactics. At the same time, if we look at some of these other powers down here, increases your power rating, critical severity, not that good, vicious pursuit, um, that's a nice increase, that's okay, dying breath never excited me, I don't know, maybe I will keep this as the general build I want to go with or at least test coming into module 15. So I think for, yeah, for module 15, for Saboteur, this is what I'm going to be testing with first and foremost. Just uh, a rough idea. Might make a few adjustments, but I think more or less this is what sounds the best to me without any testing. I haven't done testing, can't say, but uh, it will be fun to try. So because I actually can't re-roll any of my other loadouts are gonna or maybe what if I spend AD? Oh, it works with Astro Diamonds. No, it doesn't. Does it? It don't look like it does. Oh, hey, it does because I can remove all these points and backtrack. It doesn't just reset it. Okay, I don't know if this is more tedious than it was before or more useful. Questionable. Alright. So generally, these are going to stay the same, except... We're going to... Yeah, okay. So let's look at Scoundrel. Lifesteal. I always go Lifesteal. Some people go Deflection. It's your choice. We are going to stick with... Press the advantage, I think, because Survivor just, hmm, it's not that good. Back alley tactics, always a must. Let's see, Master and Fighter. This is, I think, a, no, it's not a new feat, but they did rework it. Deflecting an attack causes the attacker to become unbalanced. You deal 10% more damage from targets affected by unbalanced, and you take 10% less damage from targets affected by unbalanced. So actually, it may not hurt to have extra deflection instead of lifesteal. So maybe we'll roll with that. Concussive strikes, your critical strikes and attacks from behind daze your foes for two seconds. Foes can only be dazed this way, blah, 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 blah. That uh, doesn't sound interesting. Dealing damage to foes increases your damage by 1% for 3 seconds. This effect can stack up to 10 times and grants an additional 5% damage when at maximum stacks. We'll take it. We'll see. It's worth testing. You deal 20% more damage to foes who are affected by a control effect. This is one I'm actually very eager to test out because Skullcracker, one of the... 
mechanics it has is while marked enemies take 25% more damage from your attacks and your powers deal damage to them as if they were controlled. So in other words, low blows should be increasing your damage by 20% when Skullcracker is activated. I'm not saying that's the case. I'm just saying, does it stack? Does it stack with that? Does it work? Because in that case, that's a 45% damage increase from that. And that's quite a big buff. So, yeah. We're going to throw some into that. Every second, your deflection chance increases by 5%, stacking up to 20 times. So 20 times 5 is 100%. Deflecting an attack resets this bonus and causes you to something. The attacker dealing 200% of your weapon damage is physical damage. This effect can only trigger on the same target once a second. Hmm. It does sound interesting. You know what? I am going to add it. We'll have Skullcracker, then, hmm, I think I'm going to stick with Shady Preparations and then go with Knife's Edge as well and keep that for a Scoundrel build for testing. I think, yeah, I think that's what I'm going to try and aim for. Yeah, yeah, I think that's an okay setup for testing. Like I said, I am very interested to see how low blows counteracts or works alongside Skullcracker. Yeah, so we'll keep that. So this is actually our test scoundrel. So we'll keep that. Who's my test saboteur? I don't have 60,000 AD on this character. But let me do it anyways. We're going to backtrack here. And, uh, is this one that I wanted? No, it's not. I wanted Knife's Edge. The reason I don't take Exposed Weakness is because if you already have the 100% armor penetration, resistance ignored, ignoring another 25% of your target's armor that doesn't exist doesn't give you anything. So we are going to leave that. Uh, So we're going with Gutterborns, Shadowy Opportunity, that, 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 and that. Okay, so that's our Saboteur test. Do I even want to bother testing Whisper Knife? Let's take Executioner, we'll see if we can retrain. We can, okay. So I actually don't know how much I would want to change an Executioner. Because I feel like they didn't change anything out of the ordinary that would make it more interesting. I am going to keep these three just because, like I said, back alley tactics. Just, it's too good of a bonus to pass up. I may, if, I may just for the fun of it, test Executioner with three Saboteur. Beats, or maybe more Executioner. I don't know. I'll test a few different things and we'll see. But let's see. So dealing a critical strike increases power rating. Mm, yep, we're going to go with that. Vicious Pursuit, always. Death Knell actually does sound more interesting now that it's at 50% HP. Dying Breath is as uninteresting as usual. Last moments, you deal 20% more damage to foes as their health bar diminishes. This bonus is doubled while in stealth. Interesting. Twisted Grin. Uh, not interested. Entering stealth causes... That's the damage over time. If a foe you have damaged in the last 5 seconds dies... Yep, yeah, so we're going to take Shadowborn... Shadow of Demise, those three. 
and that will be what I will test for executioner. So it honestly, it doesn't change a lot from what it was at before. I'm not saying these are the builds I'm going to keep, but these are the builds I'm going to test and see how they work with each other. If they do work with each other. So, uh, that's the plan. And, uh, yeah, hopefully we can test this later in the week. I'm not going to bother with Whisper Knife just because Master Infiltrator still has the feats that can't really be beat. But I think these different paths are going to be a lot more interesting to check and test out. So, yeah, stay tuned and uh, we'll check them out together. All right. Thanks and uh, subscribe for more. And ciao for now.